Hi, and welcome to Dan's Garage and Outdoors. Today, I'm going to show you how to make one of these pre-made dehydrated backpacking meals. These are commonly found at anywhere that you can buy camping goods. So, Walmart, uh, Bass Pro, REI, Cabela's, and those sort of places. So, these are very popular with backpackers because they're super light and they're really easy to rehydrate. Now, there is one thing to note. They do take longer to rehydrate as soon as you go past about 5,000 feet of elevation. So if you're in the mountains, usually they're going to take more like 10 minutes or so, 14. Um, depending on which recipe you use, uh, it should have instructions uh, to account for altitude. So today I'm going to be using my Jetboil. It is a minimal model. And I'm going to just be using your standard isopro container. So the first step in using a Jetboil is you want to get your fuel canister stabilizer out. This will uh, allow you to cook on an uh, uneven surface without as many hazards of tipping or anything of that sort. Alright, so you want to make sure that your, uh, your fuel canister cannot shift as much as possible and then you can get out the burner. Now, when you buy a jet boil, sometimes they come with the pot stabilizer. This is a kind of hard piece to understand. It took me a long time to figure out, but these actually turn outward to become pot supports, and then they actually just clip in. So uh, this notch will sit right here, and it will actually spin under. So the indent right here, the detent, locks under this little tab. So this is how you use it. You fold it out set it on. It's got a little uh, slit to put it in and then just twist it and it'll be locked on and then you can affix it to the container. You want to make sure to unfold the, uh, the heat control and since I'm going to be using the pot that is, comes with the jet boil today I'm not going to be using the pot stabilizer. So the first, next thing you want to do is you're going to actually uh, screw the burner onto the stove. So you want to do this, you do not want to cross thread the burner or the stove fuel. So you don't want to cross thread it, but you also don't want to like let all the gas leak out. So don't do it too slowly. But also do not cross thread them because that's a pretty permanent problem. Alright. So they are connected and I'm gonna set the jet wheel back down and make sure it's steady. Okay, so one thing that is important to note with this jet boil is you do not want to put it on the burner empty. There's a special warning that says do not heat empty um, and you also want to light it before attaching the pot. So So we know we have a cup and a quarter of water. We're going to put it in the jet boil because we do not want to run these while dry. And for a good measure, I'm going to add a little more water just in case. Okay, so per the instructions, light before using. This thing has a very nice push button start. So just turn the, turn the gas on. Alright, it is going. Then you're gonna set that on and turn it up and boil your water. All right, so now that the water has boiled, I'm gonna let it boil for a couple seconds. To do this, to use these, you open them. And the most important thing is, A, not to let all the food out. And then there's an oxygen absorber in here. 
You want to remove that before you cook the stuff. <coughs> so there are two options. You can pour it in there, or uh, some people like to pour them in here, pour them in the bag, but you can also pour them in a different container. That's a personal preference. So you want to make sure that you've got, some of them have like an oil packet in it. You want to make sure that all of that has been removed. And usually they have a uh, base that you open so that it sits flat on stuff. So you want to do that. Make sure you've gotten all the packets out. <coughs> gas off. Take off the burner. Alright. And then there's, it's kind of a, it's an art of doing this. Uh, you want to make sure that you do not uh, put too much water in because you can't remove water and you also don't want really crunchy meals. So the general rule of thumb is A, follow the instructions, but B, just to cover the top of it and usually that works really well. Right. Now we are going to close them and let the uh, the heat begin to uh, begin the rehydration process. And then about five or so minutes, you uh, stop and stir them. And usually, then you let them sit for a couple more minutes until all the water has been absorbed. In the meantime, you can uh, take care of all of your cooking utensils and such. All right, so you've waited about five or so minutes. You want to take it out and stir to make sure that there's no more dry pockets. And then you let it sit again and then you are good to eat. So, yep, just seal it back up to retain the heat and let it sit. And then you can eat it when you're finished with another weight and all the water has been absorbed. Thank you for watching. I hope that uh, helps you learn how to use dehydrated backpacking meals. Please subscribe, leave a comment, and share this. Thank you for watching.